Hello, Chris Leiter. Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed. First of all, I'd like to ask you, what risk event stands out for you in the last 10 years? It's not an event so much, Sue. I think as, uh, as really the connectivity of the world, the increasing connectivity of the world, and the fact that the speed of response has become so very much shorter now, and speed of reaction. So when events, the surprising events take place, the speed of reaction demanded is so much faster. Right. And what do you wish that you'd known 10 years ago that you know now? Or is that the same thing? That's a heck of a good question. Um, I think, I think uh, uh, the insight I have now, I've learned over the last 10 years, on risk governance, on the roles and responsibilities of boards of directors, e executive management teams, and the various uh, support functions in companies. I think that has become much more focused, in my mind anyway, over the last 10 years. Thank you for that. And who do you think is the most risk-seeking or risk-averse person in the public eye and why? Uh, the most risk-averse? Or risk-seeking person. I'm going to have to think about that one. That's an extraordinary question. <laughs> Are there any individuals that you've grown to respect over the last 10 years as risk gurus, and why? As risk? Gurus. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, there are. Um, and one of the advantages of being uh, independent is that I've had plenty of time or more time to read. Uh, I think uh, a combination of people in academia uh, and in business, um, and particularly, I think, um, chief executives, certain chief executives of certain large companies, um, who, to my mind, are the risk managers of the company, who are working on a shorter fuse, a shorter... Uh, average lifespan. Uh, I think some have, uh, who have taken the challenge of engineering transformation in their companies uh, have been really very impressive as risk takers. Right, and another question, Chris. If you hadn't become a risk manager and now a risk manager come consultant, I know you don't like that phrase, what would have been your chosen career? I think if I'd had the gift, I would have liked to have been a symphony orchestra conductor. I've always loved music, and I think to have lived in a world of music and to be perhaps the, yeah, the conductor of an orchestra would be my dream. Well, that sounds very interesting. And are there any risks that you consider to be totally unmanageable, and why? Any risks that are unmanageable, and why? Yes. Um, yes, I, th I, think, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, risk that's unmanageable. I mean to use a cliché, the Rumsfeld cliché about the known knowns and the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to admit that there are, they are there, uh, or these, these unknowns can exist. Well, I think what matters more than being um, alarmed about where, what risks are there, there and whether they're manageable or not is how, it's rather to turn the question the other way around, how resilient are we as an individual, as a family, as a company, as an organization, in case of surprises? How flexible and how resilient are we, how robust are we to be able to respond to the unknown, to the surprise? Okay, more then. intelligent approach, I think. Okay, well, thank you for that. And to turn to another very risky activity, this time a TV programme. If you went on to Celebrity Big Brother, who would you most like as a housemate? Now, I live in France, so you're going to have to explain to me what Celebrity Big Brother is. Well, basically, you're locked in a house for a number of weeks, depending on how long your popularity lasts, with a lot of celebrities, or should I say other celebrities. Which celebrity would you like to share the house with? Ah. That's a good question. <laughs> um, a celebrity. I think probably, probably an author, probably an author. Can it be a dead person or does it have to, have to be a live person? I think it would be better if they were alive. It would be a bit macabre to have a dead person on a TV program. It, it would. Oh, it's a TV program, excuse me. Um, or somebody who's going to tell me stories, somebody who's going to be a good story uh, teller. Uh, I can't have A.J. Rowling because she's probably stopped now, but uh, somebody who writes good short stories, that's what I'd like. OK, and if you were stuck in a lift with your CEO, supposing that you had one, what's the po point you'd most like to put across to them? To my CEO, stuck in a lift? Yes. I'd be pretty keen to leave the lift quickly, 
so I'd be more to make to point out where the emergency button was. I think, I think seriously, if I was going to talk about risk management, it would be to, to, to remind him, because I would hope I would have already have said this, is that investment in risk management is like risk, investment in research and development, R&D. Uh, it's not a short-term expenditure with a short-term return. It's an investment in flexibility and resilience of the company in the future and should be treated that way. Okay then, Chris, and final question. What's the most risky activity that you indulge in outside of work? Raising children. Thank you for that, Chris Letter. Right up. <laughs>